and I think this is just kind of like all through his adolescence. Pa had some friends and they would often go over and play with at these people's house. Um, and I use the word play loosely. Uh, they would go and try to kill each other at this house. He would only have four boys. So they would go and they'd visit these people and it was just uh, all out war. So I guess what the grownups were talking, the kids went out back and tried to kill each other, like legit. It would, all, it, it, it would start out like with wrestling matches. Which, you know, what group of boys doesn't wrestle, you know? So, I mean, it's not like, I'm not surprised by anything that I read in this passage. Well, maybe a little bit surprised at the end. Like, where it escalates, it's just like, whoa, where are the grown-ups? But they, you know, it's a lot of wrestling matches. And this is the, like, the famous passage in which he really derides William for being just an absolute coward. And he says that they were always getting into these scrapes with these other boys. And sometimes it would be like divided against bloodlines. Sometimes not. Sometimes it would be him against Willie. But most of the time it was he and Willie against this cadre of crazies. And he would have to go in and save William all the time because you know they'd, they'd be wailing on Willie and then he'd be screaming for help. And then, and then suddenly Harry would see red and then he'd just go in. And he talks about how he was just more than anybody could handle. I mean, the rage that blinded him. And then everyone would be screaming because, you know, get it, get Harry off me, get Harry off me, because he was coming to kill. And he just says he never felt closer to, to William than in those times when he was defending William. And, you know, he, he, he managed to pull everybody off and give William a, a minute, a breather, so that William could lick his wounds and mend his bruises. And then, you know, he'd come staggering back into the game. And Harry's just over there just patting himself on the back for, I mean, just like, why, what are you talking about? Like, it, it's all just a great big f game of fun. You're all just wrestling. It's just, it's just tooth and nail boy fun. And why can't he revel in the fun that he had as a child with this group without using it as an example of old Willie and his weakness? Uh, he says, to, to quote him, I don't know how effective or skilled a fighter I was, but I always succeeded in providing enough diversion for Willie to get away. He'd check his injuries, wipe his nose, then jump back in. When the scrape finally ended for good, when we hobbled away together, I always felt such love for him, and I sensed love in return, but also some embarrassment. I was half Willie's size, half his weight. I was younger brother. He was supposed to save me, not the other way around. Okay, big whoop. Like, if you were able to save your brother in a situation, why do you have to be so self-congratulatory about it? Like, if it hadn't been for me, poor stupid pathetic William would have just suffered at the hands of these psychos. But thanks to me, thanks to my good sense, I was able to, you know, ride in like the hero I am and save my dim-witted brother in his weak ways. Anyway, so he talks about how um, things start to escalate with him and the friends over at uh, the estate. And he says that things started going from rolling around wrestling matches to small scale wars and they were starting to use BB guns at close range. And at one point he tells a story about how they were walking outside and there was, right there is a Land Rover inexplicably with a key in the ignition. And they say, hey Harold, go get in the, go get in the Land Rover and drive away and we'll shoot you with a shotgun. And they shoot him with the shotgun. He gets into the Land Rover, like speeds off and there they are. <laughs> The games are a far cry from games with sticks and stones in the backyard that you and I are accustomed to of our youth. But anyway, they're over there with their Land Rovers and shotguns. Again, where were the adults and all of this? Then they tell about, and this was where I was like, wow, you guys, um, if this is true, I'm sorry that nobody bothered to teach you how to be a decent human being. But they, he says that on this estate, um, the parents were having a new home built and they were playing war around the construction site and one of the boys named Nix inexplicably disappeared. They didn't know where he went. And so they went looking for him. They found him at the bottom of a well. There he is moaning at the bottom of the well on his back. Did they bother to like, be like, Hey, we'll get you out. Hey, somebody run back. We need to get an emergency services out here. No, they, they're like, grab the fireworks and they light a bunch of fireworks, throw them down the well on Nick. We don't know what happened to Nick. That's the end of the story. Okay, and I'm over there being like, is Nick alive? Can he see? How much How much damage was done to his hearing? None of that. We don't know what happened to Nick. Poor Nick at the bottom of the well. 